yet another math video. Or to a totally blank gray screen. He doesn't look all that exciting, does he? Bring him down! Yes, we are doing Go Math, my friends. 3.2. It's entitled Place Value of Decimals. Let's take a look at our essential question. How do you read, write, and represent decimals through thousands? I don't know. That's a great question, though. Hopefully through this lesson, we'll be able to say yes. We do know. We're going to be looking at two mathematical brackets here. You can see them listed at the top of your page. It is going to be mathematical practice number two and number seven. Yay! Spotlights on you guys shine. Okay, goodbye. Your time's over. Now, let's go ahead and unlock that wonderful problem. I always like the real world problems here, don't you? Real world. Okay, so we're going to learn some information. As we learn math at the same time, it says the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in New York City is 1.726 miles long. It is the longest underwater tunnel for vehicles in the United States. To understand this distance, you need to understand the place value of each digit in, well, 1 and 726 thousandths. Okay, let's go ahead and see what else we have here. It says you can use a place value chart to understand decimals. Whole numbers are to the left of the decimal point. Decimals are to the right of the decimal point. The thousandths place is to the right of the hundreds place. Okay, and there we go. And here's our one mathematical practice here reminding us. This here, I do believe, is number two, no, number seven, which is look for and make use of structure. And we're going to be looking at that structure here in our place value chart. It says, I can see and understand how numbers and spaces are organized and put together as parts and holes. Okay, whoops, that was an accident, my friends. Oh, whoops, oh, whoa, hey, Mr. Warren. Okay, sorry. I don't know, my hand got kind of jittery. <gasps> Too much coffee. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. It looks like that we have a one in the ones place. Okay, a seven in the tens place. The two. So basically, we've written out, they've written out the number for us and showing that each digit in what place value it lies. So how does each decimal place value here compare to the place value to the two? Uh, to its left. Well, when I look at this, I can see here, and we learned in a previous lesson as well, that even though we have, here in this case, we have a seven in the tenths place, so that's like saying seven times one tenth. We have seven tenths. As listed below, it shows the value of that. Over here, however, you can see that it's one one hundredth, and we know that that is one tenth of one tenth. Because if you did take one tenth of one tenth, you guys may recall multiplying. Well, that is one tenth times one tenth, which is equal to one hundredth. Here we go. So that means that the tenths place here, that that one tenth is ten times greater than the hundredths place. So looking at how these are compared, you can see that these here have a lot to do with the that that power of 10 that we've learned about and how one place value is 10 times greater than the place value uh, to its right. One tenth is 10 times greater than one hundredth. Therefore, one hundredth is one tenth of one tenth. And that goes that one hundredth is 10 times greater than one thousandth, but one thousandth is one tenth of one hundred. Okay. So what we can see here then too, that each one of these digits then has the value of the place value that they occupy. So if the two is in the hundredths place, then it has a value of two hundredths. And notice the pattern here, again, looking at the structure, that each place value to the right becomes one tenth of the value to the left. And there's a zero this place in front, so that two had it been put in this place of the tenths place, we, we would have two tenths. But it's here in the hundredths place, so it only has a value of two hundredths. So it keeps the digit itself keeps moving to the right, and zeros get put in between that decimal point and uh, the digit that appears in this particular number. Here it says the place value of the six in uh, one 
uh, and 726 thousandths is thousandths. See the value of 6 in 1.726 is 6 times 1 1 thousandth or and it's written as a decimal. Now the standard form that we write the way we write a number is simply how um, you just write down the digits. So here we have 1 and 726 thousandths. The word form is 1 and 726 thousandths. <laughs> what I just said, but that's the word form. And then of course the expanded form would be 1 times 1. As you can see that would equal 1. And then plus 7 times 1 tenth because it is in the tenths place value column so it's going to be 7 times 1 tenth plus 2 times 1 hundredth times 6 times 1 1 thousand and that's how all that fits in there how nice so it says explain explain how the value of the last digit in a decimal can help you read a decimal oh well definitely the last digit here of the decimal determines the name of the decimal here thousands it determined the name because it was a digit that was in the very last column. So uh, if we had a number that didn't have a digit in the thousands place, then we might would say this number 1 and 72 hundredths, but it had a 6, and so that digit in the very last column kind of decided or dictated uh, the name, as they say here, helped you read a decimal. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, I love math. I just love math. This is just, you know, the numbers and the more you work with numbers, the more numbers are really good friends. You know what I mean? They're like your buds because they always are truthful and they always follow good patterns and structure. Yeah. OK, I know I'm getting a little off track here, but I do love my math and I know you guys do, too. OK, so let's try this. It says use place value to read and write decimals. Let's try that. So here we have the standard form is 2 and 35 hundredths. If we look at the very last digit here in this number, we can see that it's in the hundredths place. So I know my naming of this decimal will be hundredths. So I'm going to write 2 and 35 hundredths. So I could write 35 hundredths. OK, when we look at expanded form, 2 times 1 you can see is 2. Plus, you can see that um, 3 is in the tenths place. So that will be 3 times 1 tenth plus 5 times 1 one hundredth. Now they're giving us some other ones to try here, but they're not giving us the standard form. Instead, they're giving us the word form. So 3. Those are probably the nicest one. Three and. So when you know you have that word and, you know you have your decimal place right there. And it says 614 thousands. Now I'm going to just do this to kind of help you out. But if, if thousands is how this decimal is being named, we know we need to have three place values here listed. So this is 614. So we can put 614 thousands. Expanded form. Well, we look at that very first one. It's going to be 3 times 1 will give us our 3, plus 6 times 1 tenth, because it's in the tenth place, good. Plus, we're going to have 1 times, and of course, this is in the hundredths column, so that's going to be 1, that's right, hundredth, and then plus, and then we have a 4 times, and then, of course, that's in the thousandths place, and that can be written as 1 one thousandth. My goodness, this is lovely. This is really good. I like it. I really do. Okay, now page two. Good skidding. Dun 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 dun. dun. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, that's a spider. Hey, I know what you're thinking. You have your book. You're working with Mr. Wara today, and you notice. Wait a second, Mr. Wara. I don't have a spider in my book. And that's right, because I added him in mine. Yes. What can I say? I like spiders. Blah. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, I know you wanted me to do it again. Okay, so let's look at our example here. It says use a place value chart. It says a common garden spider, see he's harmless, uh, spins a web with its silk that is about, oh my goodness, three thousandths millimeter thick. Okay, it's not very thick, is it? A commonly used sewing thread is about three tenths millimeter thick. How does the thickness of the spider silk and the thread compare. Well, I'm sure some of you already 
trying to compare. Look at that number and the value. If we're talking about three thousandths and three tenths, you may recognize right away that the three tenths is a larger number than it is. So that would mean the spider silk web is much thinner, less thick. So let's write our numbers down here in this place value chart. So I have no ones. So I'm going to write that down there. I have on my, and again, I'm doing the spider silk first here, and I have no tenths. I have no hundredths, but I do have three thousandths. Over here, I have no ones. I have, ooh, three tenths. I have no hundredths, and I have no thousandths. And I actually don't have to put those zeros in there, but since we're comparing, I thought it would be nice. So there we've got. Now it says count the number of decimal place positions to the digit so count the number of decimal place value positions to the digit three in three tenths and three thousandths. Okay, I can do that. It, three tenths has how many fewer decimal places than three thousandths? Well, it has, looks like to me, two fewer decimal places if you were to compare the two. Two fewer, because this, this guy's like way out here. So we're talking one would give you to the hundreds and maybe magic pen would be handy. Magic pen. One and then two. Okay, make my little arrow there. Oh, pure beauty, my friends. So we could put two here. Oh, two fewer decimal places. The 10 times 10, of course, is 100. And so three tenths is, well, it's 100 times as much as three thousandths. Because remember, we had that times 10, right? 10 times greater than the digit to its right. So in this case, tenths is 10 times greater than hundredths. And so that means if we take one power of 10, a second power of 10, we have 100. All right, we're okay with that. So that means then that three thousandths is one hundredth, okay, of three tenths. There we go. Now, so the thread is one hundred times as thick as the garden spider silk. The thickness of the garden spider silk is one hundredth that of the thread. So we made our statement and we also have that mathematical practice two over here, reason abstractly and quantitatively. It says that I can use reasoning habits to help me contextualize and decontextualize problems. You can use place value patterns to rename a decimal. Use place value patterns, rename three tenths using other place values. So it's written here, three tenths, three times one tenth. Okay, here we have, interesting, we have 30 hundredths. Now, 30 hundredths is the same as 3 tenths because there's 10 hundredths in each tenth. So that's why would that would make that 30 hundredths. And in this case, we would basically be saying 30 times then that 1 over 100, 1 hundredth will equal 30 hundredths. Here, look at what we have here. We have 300 thousandths. And then, of course, we can write that as 300 times 1 thousandth. Okay. And, wow, no, it's over. This is, uh, you would know there's no more. Okay, I'm getting emotional. Hey, you know, my friends, you did an outstanding job. Great to have you on board. Now, live long and prosper. <laughs>